If Yan Ching takes himself out, does he win or does he lose? <laughs> Anyways, it's finally time to do justice for our boy. He definitely deserves it. It's been a long time coming and he actually does really well against this Memory of Chaos. And this is what I think is his best team overall. Not in terms of pure damage, but just synergistically. You got Japar giving him shields. That way his talent is always up. So he has that buff, not taking actual damage. You have Pella who, okay, calm down, Tingyan. <laughs> She's already taken damage because she got targeted, but Jabhart has his light cone and that taunt. Oh my goodness. Dude, she's already at less than half health and the fight just started, what? <laughs> anyway, we have Jabhart for the shield, so that way Jian Qing can keep his talent buff up. You have Pella for the AoE defense shred and her E4 makes her skill reduce enemies ice resistance by 12% which is really nice for Yan Qing. Look at this damage, man. He's also not that invested. You'll see when I show you his builds, he's got level seven traces and he's level 70 out of 80. He does have speed boots and Sele's light cone though, which do help a lot, but he's missing a lot of damage potential just because of how low invest. Oh my goodness, her shield's almost out too. What is going on? Why is Tingyan taking so much damage? <laughs> But yeah, one of the biggest drawbacks, of course, with Yan Qing is he's kind of locked in a single target, but it makes you kind of think about how to play him optimally. Like, you have to figure out which target to prioritize and then switch around. But it does feel his animations are so sick. Like, I love playing him. But yeah, we have Ting on here. She gives him energy, gives him damage percent buffs, benediction, which also gives him some extra hits, too. So she's very nice on this team. He has an unnecessarily high alt cost of one for- Dude, Tingyun, please. <laughs> unnecessarily high at 140. It is really strong, but I don't think it needs to be. Either way, he is very satisfying. Look at this damage. <laughs> and seeing all those numbers and the follow-up attack. He does have a bit of RNG in his kit with his talent doing that follow-up attack, but yeah, it's- Did we just miss our- we got effect res there, so I don't think we got the res down. My other problem with Yan Qing is he's kind of locked to Japard. You can use March, you can use Fire MC, but him not being able to take damage, like you can play him without taking damage, and I'll show you a second fight for a good comparison too. And he'll still do well, but just not having 100% uptime on his talent really hurts. This also means he won't work well with Fushuan because Fushuan doesn't completely deflect all damage that allies take. She takes a portion of it and we'll see tomorrow how much that is. By the way, Fushuan coming out tomorrow, I'm so excited. I think it comes, I think she releases at like 12 p.m. my time though and I won't be able to get her until like later that night. But definitely expect me to make some hyper carry videos. I'll definitely be testing that and Mono Quantum as well. I'm super excited. Model Quantum definitely won't be at full power until we get a Quantum Harmony unit, but it's still going to be pretty decent. It's going to be the only team in the game that can guarantee enemies have elemental weakness to it. Well, if you have Silver Wolf, because all your characters are Quantum, so the only implant you have is Quantum. <laughs> so in that sense, if you're looking for a team that's low cost to invest in, the Silver Wolf Model Quantum team is really good because Again, you don't need to worry about elemental coverage anymore on one half if you're farming or not farming. Worrying about memory of chaos, so that is a consideration to make. Anyway, three cycles with this team, and Tingyun pretty much, oh, Tingyun almost didn't make it out alive, <laughs> as expected. But let's take a quick look at his build here, and we'll also do a a run with attack percent boots and an e2 branya that way you can get a good comparison of a more hyper invested team and how that compares so these are his stats i do think last time i checked calyx sword play at s5 is actually stronger than an s1 in the night for yan Qing, just because his skill and all all of his attacks have multi-hit and his skill hits four times i think so you get pretty much the entire damage bonus and it's up to 70% on that weapon, I think, at S5. So, yeah, it, it's crazy. The only problem is target swapping is a lot harder, but it's definitely worth using if you have it and you don't have In the Night or his signature. 
Only 13.8% of you are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. Also, I just started streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash artumbo. I'll leave a link in the description as well. Anyways, you can see here we got an absolute giga team for him. We have Branya. We still have Tingyun, of course, because he needs the help with getting his ult back. We have Locha here. This is as strong as a team as I think I can make without, you know, look how much damage that first one did. <laughs> but yeah, I still think that Japard is com or not comfier, but it just, it's definitely a better team overall. Cause here, look, he loses his talent stack. It's still gonna work well just cause of how strong these other supports are. But yeah, I I just wanna see how much damage he can do with the Branya here <laughs> out of curiosity. I can't wait for the day we get a preservation character that gives us a shield on their skill. So it's like Zhongli, but you know, you don't need the energy to alt like Japard. I don't know how broken that would be, or actually, I don't even know how good that would be because it's turn-based game, right? You can still get way more turns. Like if you use a Branya with the DPS, you actually give them too many actions and then their shield expires. That's the biggest problem I have <laughs> with shields. And that's why I never use Yenching, Branya, and Japard together because Yenching just gets exposed, like his shield wears off because he took too many turns and he just gets hit loses his buff but yeah it's pretty well it's not hard to make him work it's just you need to play in certain ways to make him work so in that sense maybe it's a little bit more complicated but he's still very strong for sure like even with low investment he gets so much crit value that you don't need the best relics and him being really easy to farm is another upside because, guys, relic farming in this game, I say this all the time, is an absolute pain. We don't get a chance at any offsets because we need, okay, not only do we need a four piece on the main relics, we need a two piece planar set too. <laughs> like, why? We can't even use an offset. But, you know, you know what I mean. If we're comparing to Genshin, it's still they have a better system where you can actually select the specific piece you want but yeah substat rolls there are a lot more options that are not as desirable and no chance at an off piece if we're trying to complete a set of course you could use mix sets or rainbow relics but we know how much that's pretty copium let's be real <laughs> we want to be using sets in this game but yeah we do have better odds at choosing our relics because we can pick the boots we can pick the body even hand and I was gonna say flower, but head, if we really wanted, and planar ornaments, ornaments. But yeah, you can see this clear. It is slightly faster than the last one, but at the cost of a much more expensive team. Like the first team is very achievable. The only thing you really needed was Japard. I wanna say almost everyone has Pella, but every time I say that, I get people saying in the comments that they don't have Pella, <laughs> which is unfortunate because she's been on so many banners and she's such a great unit. She is on Fushuan, though, right? So that is definitely a good place to get her. We do have Fushuan coming tomorrow, so definitely excited for that. Anyway, let's take a quick look at Yan Ching's updated build. He's got attack percent boots this time, just so he can dish out more damage. And we are using an E2 Branya to give him 30% more speed, which is like 32 or 33 on him. But... Even then, we're not getting that much of a bonus over that first team. So I do think overall, let's be real, the first team is a better generalist team. 777, he's also level 70 out of 80. He doesn't have his ice damage or attack percent final traces unlocked either. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you next time.